Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. My name is Evie and I read books and today I got for you guys my August TBR. I don't really make TBRs that often anymore because I tend to mood read for a long time because like the past almost year I've been in a somewhat of a ups and downs reading slump so I tried to mood read but I felt like making a TBR for myself this month just to try and get back to the old days where I did make TBRs and I did read a lot of different things, some things out of my comfort zone, some things I just really am excited for. I am not gonna say that I am actually reading all of these books. I'm gonna pick, I think, four and I'll just see if I manage to read them. And I'm gonna pick them through my TBR cards that I got. I don't know if I'm gonna do this every single month, but I'm also gonna try to prioritize a particular series that I'm gonna read at least one or maybe even all or multiple books of. And this month's series is gonna be The Summer I Turned Pretty. And then I also made a little list for myself with 10 books that are anticipated, less anticipating. Like some books I just really am not feeling like it and if they haven't been read by the end of this year, I might just not even read them and DNF them just completely or like unhaul them. Some of them I am really looking forward to, but they just have not been picked yet. If I'm correctly, I have these uh, TBR cards. Um, these were from a Belgian FT shop, I think. I'll leave a link down below if I find them. And they have four colors, I guess. It's uh, yellow, purple, green, blue, and pink. And I'm gonna just pick per color one card. Um, I don't know if the colors don't really care, like the prompts or the colors have no match with it, but I just thought it was nice to uh, pick prompt per color every time or at least for the CBR. I don't know if I'm gonna make a TBR every month. Right, so I'm gonna start off with the yellow ones. Um, I'm just gonna spread them open and pick a card out of it. And that's this one. Read a book you think you will rate five stars. Okay for that prompt I chose The Thursday Murder Club by Richmond, Richard Oseman. Uh, I was looking, I have multiple books that I think that could be five stars, but um, this prompt, um, this premise just sounds really right up my alley. And um, I thought, you know what, I'll pick this one. I bought this one recently in a really nice book and wine shop in Antwerp, which is, I am definitely, next time I'm in Antwerp, I just want to have a little peek there. In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved mysteries murders. But when a brutal killing takes place on their very doorstep, the Thursday Murder Club finds himself in the middle of their first life case. Elizabeth, Joyce, Ibrahim, and Ron might be pushing 80, but they still have a few tricks up their sleeve. Can our unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before it's too late? If there's one thing I love, it's um, amateur sleuthing murder mysteries, so... That's why I think it's going to be a 5 star. I have no clue if the writing is going to be good or if anything is going to be good about it. I have heard a lot of good things about it. I think there's already a second or maybe even a third book out. So yes, I am starting a new series with this, <laughs> but I hope that I love it and that I just catch up on it fairly quickly and not just leave it hanging for years. Next up is Purple. Purple I don't have that many because I have some that I have used already, so after this video I might just uh, mix them back in but let's get um, this one <laughs> read a book with 450 plus pages do I even have that it's one that is not that I'm not really looking forward to reading but I know that's like the first one I grabbed because I don't think I have uh, that many 400 plus page books <laughs> that is the outsider by Stephen King I have a kind of a love-hate relationship with Stephen King I enjoy his stories, but I always think they're way too lengthy for the story itself, so that's why I kind of put them off. Um, this one is one that I wanted to put on those 10 books, but I ended up picking another Stephen King book, and I'm um, sad because if I picked this one, I already had picked off another one of that list. Um, I have no clue what this is about, um, and I'm going to check really quickly. Um, like on Goodreads, the English version, because this is a translated book. I'm gonna check really quickly the synopsis on Goodreads. Uh, unspeakable crime, a confounding investigation at a time when the king 
Rand has never been stronger. He has delivered one of his most unsettling and compulsively readable stories. An 11-year-old boy's violated corpse is found in a town park. Eyewitnesses and fingerprints point unmistakably to one of Flint City's most, citi most popular citizens. He is Terry Maitland, little league coach, English teacher, husband, and father of two girls. Detective Rolf Anderson, whose son Maitland once coached, orders a quick and very public arrest. Maitland has an alibi, but Anderson and the district attorney and soon add DNA evidence to go with the investigation expense and horrifying answers begin to emerge. King's prolusive story kicks into a high gear, generating strong tension and almost unbearable suspense. Okay. Um, this farmer's dough sounds really nice and like I'm really looking forward to it. I also saw that it's the first in a series of Holly Gibney. I think Holly Gibney I have read. Does she play part in the um the Mr. Mercedes series? Because that's a series or a trilogy I have read and I have kind of like mixed feelings about that those are the only three books that I had read from Stephen King and I was like, yeah, I know. Like, I like the story, but it was way too long for the story to be, like, good. And then on to the green ones. Oh, I'm really hoping that it's gonna be, like, short books or, you know, books that I don't really need to pay that long for. Um, I'm gonna pick this one. Read the fourth book on your bottom shelf. Well, my bottom shelves are all my unread books, so that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so the fourth book on my unread shelf, or like my bottom shelf, is the Hawthorne Legacy, the second book in the Inheritance Games trilogy, which is also great because this one is also a trilogy I, I loved. Like, I read the first one, I think, a year ago, or maybe over a year ago. I think I gave it five stars. I was in love with it. I bought the second and the third part, but then I just haven't finished them yet. The Inheritance Games, this one is the first one, because I'm obviously not going to say the premise about the second one if I have the first one. She came from nothing. Avery has a plan. Keep her head down, work hard for a better future than an eccentric billionaire dies, leaving her almost his entire fortune. And no one, least of all Avery, knows why. They had everything. Now she must move into the mansion she inherited. It's filled with secrets and codes and the old man's surviving relatives. The family hellbent in discovering why Avery got their money. Now there's only one rule. Winner takes it all. Soon she is caught in a deadly game that everyone in this strange family is, keep, is playing. But just how far will they go to keep their fortune? Then let's go on to the blue ones. Okay, um, that's this one. Read the, a book where the title begins with a T. I picked one from the pile of 10 books that I got and this is one that I am looking forward to, uh, but it's also a smaller one, which I think could work with the gigantic book that I have. I'm already on my TBR and with, you know, working full time and reading will be up to that up and down all the time. I chose The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I've bought this last year in September and then I kind of got in a reading slump and I haven't been reading that much yet. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to continue on reading a lot more. Nora's life has been going from bad to worse. Then at the stroke of midnight on her last day on earth, she finds herself transported to a library. There she is, given the chance to undo her regrets and try out each of the other lives she might have lived. Which raises the ultimate question, with infinity, infinite choices, what is the best way to live? Oh gosh, I almost dropped it. Like I said, it's a smaller book. I don't know if it'll take me a long time or not. But I'm definitely happy to have a little bit of a smaller book that I am really interested in on it. Although... It's only the outsider that is just scaring the shit out of me right now. Okay, I'll do my last book. And like I said, I'm also trying to mix in the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy uh, in there. Um, but I'm filming this a little bit earlier, so I might have read that trilogy before August. The Pink Ones, uh, which is clearly my favorite color. Um, read a book with a number in the title. That will be a pretty hype book, and I have a lot of people talking about it, and wow, the font is so small, I just saw. 
Okay. No, it's a book that a lot of people have been talking about like a long time. I think TikTok also made it like quite famous. I bought it. I was intrigued. I haven't read it yet. I haven't bought it that long time ago, so it's okay. It's not one that has been on. <laughs> Just... But that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have not read any Taylor Jenkins Reid books. I have heard a lot of good things about them. I just haven't gotten around to actually reading them. Um, but I am intrigued. I bought this one, I think, because I saw it everywhere and I was like, okay, now I want to know because I'm mostly a person who reads books after the hype. So we'll see if it lives up to the hype. Reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s, and of course the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story is near the con its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's own in tragic and ir irreversible ways. So I'm more of a thriller and then sometimes a contemporary romance reader. Um, <laughs> so this is something that's not really up on my alley. I am really intrigued about, I think it's mixed media a little bit. And I am just intrigued about the time zones because I do like sometimes a little bit of a historical element in it. Most of the times it's like murder mysteries with a dual perspective. This is nothing like that, but I am intrigued. So I'm really curious if I'm going to like it or not. So these are the four books. They're fine. I mean, these are the five books that I will be reading. Um, obviously, I'm going to try to intersect the Summer I Turned Pretty series in there because obviously it's Summer series and I just haven't read that yet. And I do really want to watch the TV show, um, but I just have to read the books first because I'm not going to watch a TV show after, uh, before I read all of the books. So I might put it in my August TBR. Maybe I have read some of them already before August starts um, because, I'm, like I said, I'm pre-filming this a little bit because I just felt like filming right now. <laughs> and then I also know which books I cannot take anymore when July is still going on. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me, hit that subscribe button down below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!